Knowing that Dad had only three weeks to live and that the COVID restrictions were about to bite, we invited all of his friends over for a party and we drank his good champagne and his best wine from his cellar. It was essentially, uh, while well, nobody said it out loud, it was a living wake and it was a really special day. And then day zero finally came. Two men came to the house around 10 a.m. They were terribly kind, they were terribly patient. They filled out the paperwork, they got Dad's signature, they interviewed us all one last time. They showed Dad what to do. They ensured that he was competent to do it himself. There were more safeguards right up to the very end. When they left, it was all we could do to stop Dad mixing up the mixture straight away the moment the doors closed behind them. But instead, my kids came over to their grandparents' house. We had a cup of tea. We had some sandwiches. We told a few funny family stories, favourite holidays, happier times. Then Dad went to lie down. And when he was settled, my kids went in to say their goodbyes. They left and took themselves back to my house, and then it was our turn. Mum went to speak to Dad alone for a while, and then my sister and I joined them. We sat on the bed, and he told us how much he loved us, how proud he was of us. He made us promise to look after Mum, and then he mixed up his medicine that he'd been shown how to do, and he drank it. We held his hand. We told him how much we loved him. And about three minutes later, he very calmly and very peacefully and very quietly died. Now, more than two years on, it's not a small thing to talk about this. Indeed, we will have family and friends who, because of their faith, will be very disappointed to have it confirmed that this was the pathway that my father chose although I think they might have suspected as much, even if it wasn't spoken of at the time. Dad died on the very day the Prime Minister uh, announced that there was only a 10-person restriction on funerals. So we never had that cathartic uh, family congregation with friends and family that would have allowed us to talk about his life or his death. And he really loved that because he never wanted a funeral anyway. He was almost as strident about that as he was about his right to die. I read through some of the speeches on this issue from my colleagues in here and my colleagues in the other place, and those particularly who will vote differently from me. They have used the arguments that I once used, all reasonable arguments, Section 22, unicameral parliaments and safeguards. However, the most common refrain in any of those speeches is far less clinical, far less intellectual, but no less compelling. I know in my heart that this is wrong. Now, I respect this opinion because I once felt in my heart that it was wrong too. I once voted against this legislation, but I will be voting in favour of it today. We say in this place that when we make a decision that we will walk a mile in another man's shoes. Well, I have certainly done that, having experienced it, having lived it having held the hand of a person that I deeply loved. As he died peacefully, as he died painlessly, as he died willingly, and in the manner in which he wanted, in the manner in which he had always wanted, and at the time of his choosing, well, I now feel very, very differently. It was truly a beautiful death. And to those Australians who live in the territories, rather than in any part of the, other, of the country that's represented in this chamber, I say to you, who am I to deny you the choice to leave this earth in the same beautiful way as did my father, Steve? And I commend this bill to the Senate.